Good morning. Our opening hymn is 520. This is the Feast of Victory, 520. You may please stand if you want or lie down if you so choose. the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood Set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you, the author of life, were put to death for our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you were raised from the dead so that we might live with you forever. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you shine your light of salvation upon us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, 
we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you the author of life you put to death, but raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now, I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand, through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent. Therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 1068 in the hymnal. Lord, let us see your, let your face shine on us. Number 1068. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. His expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The, that way we may be sure to know we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Well, they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name. To all the nations beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. I was looking out during the first half of mastering our readings. I recognize a few sort of new faces. So if you are a little new here or giving Mass a try, we're very happy to have you here. And also, if you are new here, you're lucked out because there's food and goodies after Mass in the parish hall. So you can feel free to gorge yourself on those things and maybe meet a few um, strange but lovely people that are part of our parish. Okay. Yesterday uh, evening, I invited the pilgrims from the Holy Land for a reunion. It's been a year since we were there. Um, So a lot of them came to Mass at 5.15. And then we went over to uh, the rectory for potluck dinner and desserts. Some of the leftover desserts I brought over, so you'll notice they they float in the air. No, they don't. Um, So they're over there, too. But it was great to be with everyone. And just a great reminder... Um, because our gospel, like so many of the Easter gospels we've been hearing these few weeks, um, this is third Sunday of Easter, takes place in the upper room. So Luke's gospel today takes place in the upper room, the cenacal. It was one of those places that we visited. But there is something about a pilgrimage or any sort of travel that can open our minds. So pilgrimage is, is definitely, and Holy Land especially, Um, It's very religious and very focused on that. But I think any sort of travel, we can look at it as sacred, a sacred journey, sacred travel. Things happen to us. We see things in a different way. Um, We enjoy other people and just discovering more about the world and life. Even for those people who just came back from Philadelphia. You had a class trip to Philadelphia? And when was that? Friday, and you're alive and well? So, and isn't it true, right, Sam, or anyone who, anyone else part of your trip that's here? Oh, Ka- Catherine? No, who else? Oh, you went too? So isn't it something about when you go to a different place, had you ever been to Philly before, the city of brotherly love? Yeah? So isn't it something when you go to a place, it opens your mind a little bit, you see different things, and it's fun, Right? But that's part of this journey of Easter, is you and I are part of the sacred journey of our lives, that we continue to discover new things. And it can happen very powerfully when we go away somewhere. But actually, you and I believe it's happening in our midst right now. So Luke's gospel now, because we listened to John and Mark the past few weeks, now we have Luke's version of this. And he's picking up after those two people went on the walking on Emmaus. So remember, the gospel opened. The two of them came back from their trip and said how they recognized Jesus. Remember, those are the two 
They left Jerusalem Easter morning all sad and depressed. They walked to the town of Emmaus. The stranger was with them. They didn't recognize who Jesus was until um, he, he sat down and broke bread. And then Luke says their eyes were opened and they recognized him. See, that's what you and I pray for, that our eyes will be opened and we can recognize Jesus who is always with us. But so often, maybe most often, we don't recognize he's there. Now notice what Luke does in this passage. They're in the upper room, this cenacle, this very holy place. And Jesus now is with them. Uh, it takes them for a while to recognize him. And then notice what Luke says. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. So now their eyes are opened, and now their minds are opened to understand the scriptures. And that's what you and I pray for, especially when we come to Mass. The first half of Mass is trying to listen to the scriptures and figuring out what is going on. Because a lot of us struggle with understanding what the Bible is about. But we have this great gift that every week we give little passages a try and we let them play with our imaginations so that Jesus can be in our midst and open our minds to understand the scriptures. And last night at our reunion, we were all saying how we, don't, we hear the Bible very differently because we were in those places. But that's part of this gift of the Eucharist, to understand that God is always inviting us into new life. So what are the, some of those things that we notice? Notice in Luke's gospel, um, how do they recognize him? He has to show them his hands and feet. So they recognize Jesus by his wounds, by what he went through. And I think that's one of the ways that our eyes and minds can be opened, is who you are and who I am has a lot to do, believe it or not, with our wounds, where we've been hurt in our lives or where we've caused it. That somehow God is working through all of those, that mess, and bringing new life by our wounds. And Jesus is not afraid to show them his wounds. Then he says this other thing, um, touch me. Remember in John's gospel, it's Mary Magdalene who throws himself at the feet of Jesus outside the tomb, and Jesus says, don't touch me. But in Luke, Jesus says, touch me and see that I have flesh. I'm not a ghost. I'm not a spirit. I'm not just a soul. And Jesus is trying for you and I to figure out, and this is the tough one, that the center of our faith is resurrection of the body. Jesus is risen from the dead bodily. That's why he says, do you have anything here to eat? And they find a baked fish. Blech. Um, and he eats it in front of them. To show it's our bodies. You know, a lot of us, we sort of cheapen what our faith is about and what, what eternal life is about. When we say, when I die, my soul goes to heaven. That's actually not our Catholic faith. When we die, we rest in the light and peace and refreshment of God, awaiting the last day, the resurrection of the dead. The, the resurrection of the body, we say it every week in the creed, when all of us are risen together. And if you think about that, it only makes sense. We love people not because they're an idea, like, oh, I think she's lovely, she has a beautiful soul. Well, that's part of it. But who we are is our bodies. It's not we just have one. We are our bodies. And our bodies have been redeemed. That's why when Jesus saves us, he gives us his body and blood in the Eucharist. It's not just saying a prayer and an idea. It's the reality of Jesus coming into our bodies. So that's that incredible gift of the resurrection of the body. So we're with our loved ones, not just as little invisible spirits, but who we are, who we are. And that's why you and I are invited as best we can to take care of our bodies. And when we're not feeling so well, that's when we feel disconnected with who we are. We can't really be ourselves because of illness. And Jesus reached out to the sick all the time. And the church has the anointing in the sick and lots of folks in hospital ministries 
to help those people who are, who, are, who are falling apart, literally, so they can be healed and made whole again. So not only is that going on, but now the other two readings the church gives us, and this is part of the Easter miracle, because both readings that Brian read for us and Kira, both readings talk about our guilt. Notice what Peter says. You put the author of life to death. You denied him. You turned him over. You called for his death. But you acted out of ignorance because the Lord came to save you. And that's one of the ways our minds and our eyes are opened. To recognize, yes, I'm a sinner, and I've done plenty of wrong, and I'm going to continue to do wrong, but God loves me and forgives me, and that's going on right now. That's this incredible gift. So in the first letter of John, the second reading said, when you sin, you disconnect yourself to God, but you and I have the Savior who has given us his forgiveness. And what does he ask of us? To follow his way of life. And John says, to keep his commandments. And that's not a set of rules that we check off. It's a way of life based on Jesus' teaching and the Holy Scriptures that we continue to try to figure out week by week to to find that life. So all of that is going on in in these readings today. And, you know, if you think about it, too, in that gospel story taking place in the upper room, the cenacle, This is our upper room. This is our church, St. John the Baptist. And it's our home. It's where you and I gather for the sacred meal of the Eucharist. And just like with our families, we can be filled with new joy in life when we share a meal. When we gather on Sundays, it's part of sharing the gift of the body and blood of the Lord, that he opens our minds to the scriptures and we recognize him in the breaking of the bread. With all of our sins, With all of our faults, all of that, the Lord gives us his peace and his life. So let's pray for that gift of Easter as we continue to celebrate as best we can during these holy days of Easter. Let us stand now for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Made for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in God's love and mercy, we present our petitions this morning. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the people of God may draw closer to the presence of the Lord in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our leaders who serve us in government office will build bridges of peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our young people preparing for First Holy Communion may be filled with the presence of the risen Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have returned to the church this Easter may be filled with the joy of God's love and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick who pray for healing of body, mind, or spirit will know that the Holy Spirit is close to them, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will rest in the peace of God's love, remembering Henry T. and Agnes Young, Helen Milheiser, Mark Keeley, Deacon Fred Finter, and Michael T. Tucker. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you know our needs. Hear and answer our prayers according to your holy will. And open our eyes and open our minds. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. There will be one collection today for the support of our parish. Thank you again for your generosity. And please join me singing our offertory song, Alleluia, Christ is Risen, number 518. Sign of 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. If any of our young people want to come around the altar at this time for the Hour of Father, you can do so. There's plenty of room on this side. So come over. There we go. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, kids. Peace. Peace, Gracie. Peace, Giovanni. Peace. Peace, kids. Peace. Peace. Peace, Sam. Peace, Ron. Peace. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
our communion song is I Am the Bread of Life, song number 945.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. There are a couple of new parishioners. We're going to introduce them before their baptism. That's coming up. And our first is, this is Charles Eugene. How old is he now? Seven weeks old. He's going to get baptized next week. Isn't he cute? There you go. And who is this over here? Joseph Justin. JJ. Okay. And how old is jo- Joseph Justin? Two and a half months. Can I hold him up for everybody? Joseph Justin, come with father. Oh, look how cute. How cute, huh? And when, when is the baptism? Do we know? May 5th. May 5th. Is that in th- three weeks? Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Because he's going to be totally transformed. You'll see. Okay. There we go. But thank you. Congratulations and welcome. Okay. Thank you for your patience today. Whenever there's a problem during Mass, Mass always continues, and we make sure whoever has a difficulty gets the help that they need. So that happened at the 8 o'clock. It happened at this Mass. Poor Liz is not feeling well, so um, she's not able to sing today, and it just goes on. But that's part of being a parish family. We go on even though we're all falling apart. Okay? <laughs> uh, there's one announcement. In two weeks after this Mass... We have a new group. You've probably seen this in the bulletin. It's called Parents Together. There's going to be a brainstorming session after the 1030 Mass. So parents, young families, grandparents, anyone, would you like to be part of that to share ideas of what we can do with our families and our young people? You're welcome to do that in a couple of weeks. And then is Krista still here? Krista in the front there in the pink. Krista is organizing this and leading our discussion, so feel free during hospitality, which is right after this Mass in the parish hall, feel free to talk to Krista, and we'll get your email so that you can always be part of what's going on with this new group. The Lord be with you. Dare I do this. May Almighty God bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, he is the scepter, he is the throne. Alleluia, he is the triumph, he is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion thunder like a mighty flood. There are some very good cookies over there. I'm not kidding. I brought some myself. Nation has redeemed us. Uh, Is she out of there? We'll ring the bells. <laughs> Hello. What a morning. Yeah, I know they come all the time. <laughs> 